Back in the early 20th century, St Helens was the main port servicing the Blue Tier tin mines. This handsome bridge was built across the mouth of the Golden Fleece Estuary in 1882. Herb King took his photograph in 1914. The bridge was replaced by this modern functional structure in 1958. I noticed with interest that the Tasmanian Revisited authors had not taken their image from the same aspect as Herb King. I was about to find out why. Dropping down into Google Street View, it was clear that if I was to faithfully recreate Herb's photograph of the bridge, I would need to gain some elevation. To the left of me there was a cliff and a steep scrubby embankment. I could see a fence, but there was no shoulder on the road where I could pull over. I would need to get up to the top of that hill somehow. Zooming out, I noticed there was a public park up there. So I drove on up to the access road and parked my camper in a shady spot. But would I still have a clear view through to the bridge? All was about to be revealed. Or was it? It was dry, slippery and dangerous underfoot as I gingerly made my way down the embankment to line up my shot. But there was a problem. I can't quite get to the exact location. It's over the other side of this uh, uh, fence and it is quite dangerous. So it is slightly, I would say, about four metres to this way. As I'm finding as I'm going around, a lot of the locations are extremely difficult and unsafe to get to, so I'm opting not to go. In a moment what I'll do is I'll take the drone up, straight up, and just give, a, give you a shot and a panoramic view of the location. Remaining as faithful to Herb's original image as I could, I took my shot. As I had feared, scrubby trees now obstructed the view through to the bridge. What we should have seen was the old bridge now replaced. The original wooden wharves reinforced and rebuilt. And the old building now long gone. But we still had a boat. It was just a bigger one. Before the wind became too strong, I took my drone up. Flying above the Golden Fleece estuary, I had a clear view of the wharves, the rivulet and the bridge. And yes, easily visible from the air, I could see the original stonework the lady had told me about. It was time to take a closer look. Now I've come down to the embankment. One of the locals said there was still some remains of one of the previous bridges. And if you look carefully just down here, you can see uh, there is some, still some stone, um, uh, it would have been the, probably one of the main pillars, I suppose, for one of the original bridges. It was a stylish bridge featuring hewn pine handrails and wrought iron balustrades. Details missing on the modern bridge of today. The original wrought iron balustrades now adorn handrails and seats in the main street of St Helens. The entrance to the bridge featured two sandstone pillars, the remnants of which still remain today. I walked on down, took a seat and watched the tide flow in gently underneath the new bridge. Today, traffic on the bridge would struggle to see the old sandstone blocks and pillars nested into the estuary embankment. But walking over, it is a different story. Okay, after coming down the hill, I've walked back down onto the new bridge and you can still see behind me there are remains of the original bridge still standing here. You can still see a lot of the fine stonework of the original uh, rampart that was built for that bridge. The abrasive action of the tidal flow has been slowly eroding away these soft sandstone blocks. Since 1914 the tide has passed by over 150,000 times. Some days a gentle flow, as we see here today, on other days a raging torrent. Eventually, these stones will lose their battle, 
and they will become just a memory.